Hi, I'm John Wright. In this video I'd like to look at underlays under column stitching. So what have we got here? We've got an input A object with uh, satin, satin fill. So just close that because we don't need that information any longer. And here's a shortcut bar for our underlays. It's in the stitch effects toolbar. And it's the first one on the left. So if I left click it, it will bring up the properties, automatically bring up the properties of the underlay in the selected object. And in this case, we've got an edge run. Okay, I'll just drag this over next to the object that we're dealing with. And you can see that we are, we're able to have a first underlay and a second underlay, and each of them have their own properties. So let's come back to the most basic of underlays, and that's the center run and that's straight through. Now the primary purpose of an underlay is to attach your uh, the garment you're stitching to to the uh, violin backing behind the product to, to give stability. So underlay is basically a stabilizer or to assist in stabilization. So the, the primary one would be a center run underlay. Other underlays that you could have and they're, they're more to do with quality uh, would be an edge run. So this is this edge run would give the stitches a line to work to a nice, neat, tidy line. The two lines you can see there, the the, the outside line is actually the, the vector shape. So there's our underlay line there. And if we look at the properties of our underlays, we can change the stitch length. We can engage variable run length, which would uh, we would need to do if we were going around a curve. And we can adjust the margins that the underlay sits inside the edge of the embroidery. So if I lift the margin here, you'll see that the edge run moves into towards the center. So it's now 1.25 millimeters in from the edge. You can adjust this, but the standard would be about 0.2 millimeters. So the number one uh, adjustment is the edges of the, the shape. Number two is the first end, number three is the second end, so we just change the distance in from the end, you can see it's changed at the top here, and, this, and likewise for the for number three. So I'll just bring that back to 0.2 of a millimetre again. And you can combine an edge run with, a, 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 say, a zigzag in your second underlay, and change its properties as well. So the reason for zigzag underlay is to give you more coverage um, and to give you some loft so you could change that if you were stitching a a light thread over dark fabric and you didn't want to increase the top density you could increase the density of your zigzag underlay if you wanted to get some loft that is a, 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 like a mound or a 3d effect in your column stitching why not try a double zigzag now with E3, we're able to change the angle of the stitching, the angle of the underlay. So I'll just zoom in and we'll change the angle back to about 30 or 40 degrees. Now if I come to my second underlay setting and do the same thing, a double zigzag, I'll change my density to about 1.2. So just change them slightly, have the, the top spacing at 1mm and the, the bottom one at 1.2, just so that you offset the stitches slightly, and then change the angle in the other direction. Now this is going to give you a really th a real 3D effect without the use of foam, not as, as exaggerated, but you can see there that you're going to get quite a bit of loft in the design. So I recommend you try that. That's a new feature in Embroidery Studio 3.